Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, Nudo here, and we're back. We're back in Testificadia, and uh, we're going to go ahead and continue getting to work on this bad boy here. Um, let's see, where I left off in my story, uh, I talk about my dad, uh, the real dad, uh, the asshole, um, yeah, so, and I just got expelled from school, and um, I think that was about it. Yeah, I got ended up being expelled from school. So anyway, so my mom had to end up registering me to this, um... Just jump back into it. My mom had to register me with our uh, our local school that we have here, and um, I do not live in a rich area of town. I've never been rich or wealthy. Um, I, I I did not come from money. Uh, we were a pretty poor town, so like literally my school that I went to was inner city. So if you can think of like big city, inner city, um, gangs and, and barbed wire fences and shit like that was essentially our school. I wouldn't say that those barbed wire fences, although I'm fairly certain that there was. Um, and don't let it be fooled that I'm from Texas and therefore I don't know what hardcore is. Yes, granted, Texas isn't New York City, but it is still like the fourth largest city in the United States of America. And when people think Texas, they always think like, um, cowboys and ranches and they think of, uh, the crazy Texas accents and stuff like that. But Houston is a metropolitan city. Like we all walks of life, everything like we have a huge cultural center. We have one of the biggest medical centers in the world. Um, so, yeah, like, suck a dick. Houston's got a lot of stuff in it, and we also have ghettos. And I mean real ghettos, not like the ghettos of Iowa, but like real fucking places where people get shot up. And I've had friends getting killed by drive-bys and stuff like that. Um, so, it it's the real deal. Um, so, so, yeah. Um so anyway, uh, the, the school we ended up, I ended up having to get sent to was this really bullshit inner city school. Um, and it was pretty fucking gay. Um, I remember getting there, and I, I think I, I mentioned this in Crusoe Island. Uh, I don't know if that video got published yet or not. Um, but their level of education was way, like a way lower standard than anything that I've ever experienced before. Remember, I got expelled from my old high school um, in the middle of my eighth grade year. So right before I went to high school. Um, so I, I just kind of want you guys to keep that in mind. Um, I ended up getting to that school and they were learning about... Um, they were just learning about how to measure the circumference of a circle. Now, this was a lesson that I had fucking learned, like, in my sixth grade year. That's how fucking far behind these people were. They were... It was just really fucking sad. At least in my opinion, it was. Um, it just... I don't know, man. It was just really fucking pathetic that these guys were, like, that far behind. Um, I really shouldn't be talking shit because, you know, it's it's not their fault. That was the education level that the state had provided. But, I mean, still, it was Jesus Christ. They were so far behind. I had always known that I was gifted in the aspect that I was intelligent, um, but I did not fully appreciate that until it was sort of one of those things where it's like everybody tells you you're good looking, everybody tells you you're funny, and you hear it so much that you're just like, yeah, okay, whatever, you're kind of blowing smoke up my ass at this point, and then you don't actually realize that that's true until you go to a place where there's nothing but ugly people or people who have no sense of humor. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that was a really weird example to give. Um, but, I mean, that was basically what I was working with is these fucking people that just, they were, I, I hate to say stupid because they weren't stupid. They had intelligence in other aspects of life, but they were just not book smart. I'll, I'll put it that way. They were not book smart. Fuck. I went down there to make a fucking axe, not to make more fucking, oh, so distracted. <sighs> anyway, um, so, yeah, so... Let me get my axe and my inventory sorted out first. Okay. Yeah, I can go back to my rant. So these people were pretty fucking far behind. And uh, I remember I was in one class. And, um, dude, like, I didn't realize how much of a stuck-up fucking pig and how, I guess, ignorant I was about a lot of things. Uh, I used up all my fucking wood. Can you believe that? God damn it. Um... Oh, look, I have some Oku right here. Okay, that 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 should work out okay. Um, I was just so naive, I guess, just monumentally fucking naive about 
the entire situation of the school and and how to interact with people it was just really fucking sad on my behalf and i i realized this when i first met my first friend in middle school and this was like a real friend like somebody who although we don't talk anymore um because we live way separate lives and 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 we just we haven't been together like we haven't seen each other in like almost a decade um if you were to call me up and be like dude i'm in a pinch and i need like 500 bucks right now or that's my ass like i would give it to him in a fucking heartbeat like no question um like without a doubt like there you go dude i'm fucking rescuing your ass whatever you owe me later and i have a feeling that if i ever got into that situation that he may very well return the favor uh if you will so anyway so his name uh was gabriel and uh gabriel was my first real friend and um i remember we were sitting in class together and it was this bullshit math class like it was fucking ridiculous and uh, uh is this see i thought i thought it was right but it's not uh i'm gonna have to fix it now um i remember that we were doing our schoolwork and uh of course like i said this was shit that i had learned like back in fucking sixth grade so it did not take me very long at all to like finish all the schoolwork and um i was sitting there and he was like hey give me your paper i was like what and he's like give me your paper he's like let me just fucking cheat real quick and you might think he didn't actually say fucking yeah i'm fairly certain that he fucking said fucking and he's like, yeah, man, let me see your fucking paper. Like, let me cheat real quick. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to fucking let you cheat off my paper. And he's like, why not? Why are you being a little bitch? Blah, blah, blah. Like, he was getting really defensive. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to let you cheat. I'll fucking show you how to do all this work. But I'm not going to fucking cheat for you or let you cheat off of me. And instead of him being like, well, fuck you, you fucking square. Like, he was actually like, uh, okay. And so I sat down with him and his friend. And uh, we ended up, we did all the math problems together. And I, I showed them how to do the math problems um and like i basically fucking tutored him right there in class and um it was kind of cool because he he learned how to do it and he was learning some like tips and tricks that i had learned along the way from my other uh from my other school and i don't know it was really cool and then from there we just became like fucking friends and we were in inseparable and he knew that i was a new kid in school i didn't know anybody i was fresh meat to the fucking grinder and he ended up introducing me around to a few people and i remember there was one kid in my school and he uh was albino i had never seen an albino before in my entire life and let me tell you something if you've never seen an albino in your life you're not prepared you're not you're like oh okay they're just missing pigment it's no big deal fuck you it's not it's it's like a fucking culture shock to see an albino in real life now if you are albino don't be upset like don't get offended because i'm not saying there's anything wrong with you or anything like that i'm just saying if you're fucking got half a hand missing you should probably warn motherfuckers before they shake your hand so don't be surprised when a dude shakes your hand and is like oh my god what happened to your fucking hand same thing if you're albino don't be fucking upset somebody's like oh my god what the fuck is wrong with you because they just don't know they're not being fucking stupid or ignorant they just don't know i knew what an albino was and this kid fucking freaked me out and he was kind of like this fucking asshole and i didn't really like him at first as it turned out he turned out to be a really good friend of mine uh at the end not a guy that i would loan 500 bucks to obviously but uh he was a decent friend nonetheless and um it was really cool he opened my eyes and i realized that i was just a fucking snob is all i was i was a fucking self-righteous fucking snob that i thought that you know the fucking world was owed to me and that's pretty much a, um, I guess that's pretty much a common complaint that I have about people nowadays that, that people have this sense of you owe me, even though that you've never, they've never fucking done anything in their entire lives. It's like, yeah, you owe me. It's like, I don't know you shit, go earn something. And that's where I kind of had that sense that I, I was, I was becoming like that. Um, or I had became like that, um, being self-aware. It's one of the beauties of growing older. <sighs> Anyway, so uh, albino friend aside, so I started making really good friends there, and um, and it was fine. It was fine. I, I had I had some fun uh, while I was there in school, and um, I remember we ended up going uh, to a presentation. Now, 
this part I know for a fact I said this in Crusoe Island. So me saying it here, it's probably going to sound like repeat if that episode already aired. If not, then you're going to hear it repeated in Crusoe Island. Um, but I felt that this moment in my life that I'm about to describe was the the second turning point. The like like if you ever look back in your life and you're like, man, if that event never happened, I would not be the person I am today. Hands down, I I, I would never exist. It's the fucking Bioshock Infinite thing. I made a decision and it completely changed the course of my life. And that decision, uh, the first one was not in my control. I had no control over that decision. That was me getting kicked out of my middle school. The reason why that influenced and changed my life so much is because um, I had... I had just recently, uh, at the time, I was really, really, really big into uh, architecture. I wanted to be an architect. My biological father had studied to be an architect, although he never became one, um, but he had studied to be one. And because, like I said, I was really good at building, uh, I was already making blueprints for houses, uh, believe it or not, um, when I was younger. Uh, because um, you and my dad were actually, my biological dad, we were actually planning on building our dream house. Uh, and so we were, had like tunnels and we would work in out the structural integrity and blah, 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 blah. It, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that I, I was supposed to go to another high school. Um, because remember I told you that the, the middle school I was in, um, it was kind of like a special program. I had to take like buses and I, I was specially enrolled there. Um, uh, it was not the school that I was quote unquote supposed to go to. Ow. Um, well, the same thing with this high school. It wasn't in my district. It wasn't in my area. And uh, we were able to apply to different high schools. Like you apply to college. And if they accepted you, then you would be kind of like the exception to the rule that I would be allowed to go to this fucking school. And the school uh, had an architectural program in it that allowed uh, students to go ahead and learn uh, architecture uh, to prepare them for college. So that way they can actually go in for a architectural degree. Um, unfortunately, because I was kicked out of middle school, I was never accepted to the high school of my choice. And, um, here's the quip, the high school that I attended, uh, the original name was Booker T. Washington high school. Booker T. Washington is a primarily all black school. Now we always joke about fucking black stuff being like, Oh, fucking nigger, blah, 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 blah. But I, I just want to lay it out there. I'm, I'm not racist. I'm, I'm really not black, white doesn't matter. Everybody's an asshole. But the thing is, had I gone to Booker T. Washington, my viewpoint on life and society and and the way I dress and the music I listen to would have been drastically different than what it is today. You see, when I didn't get accepted to Booker T. Washington, I missed out on that entire cultural exchange. I missed out on uh, on on learning black culture in general. And instead, when I ended up going to my middle school and thus the new high school, I was in a primarily uh, Hispanic school. We had some black, but it was primarily Hispanic. And believe it or not, not all Mexicans listen to shitty Tejano music. I mean, most do, but for the most part, we pretty much like what everybody else likes. I'm a big fan of fucking Dave Matthews. I love John Mayer for some reason. I, I know I'm not white. I, I shouldn't love John Mayer, but I do. Um, and with that being said, I was also introduced and, and like, I thoroughly enjoyed fucking rock and roll. Like, fucking, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Let me get a good example. Uh... One of the first bands that I was introduced to was Ozzy Osbourne, Nirvana, um, like that kind of stuff. My mom was kind of hippie-ish, so uh, I ended up getting exposed to a lot of like 60s and 70s, like Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, um, Cream, etc. And um, that music is what influenced me in my life later, and I would not have been exposed to that at all uh, if I had gone to Booker T. Washington, hands down wouldn't have been exposed to it i would have been a completely different person and if you don't think that music can't change a person it most certainly can um i need to go get more wood uh i think i'm gonna go do that right now and in fact i'm gonna go ahead and munch on some uh apples on apples so anyway that was number one pinnacle point in my life the turning point is that i, I did not get accepted in middle school the second uh happened uh in the transition from middle school to high school now with no choice as to what high school to go, I had to go to. I ended up getting, um, I ended up having to go to our local 
uh, high school, which was an inner city high school. It, it fucking sucked. Let's just be honest. And it, it was not the best environment to be in. Um, but they had an ROTC program. Uh, said ROTC program, if you don't know what ROTC is, uh, ROTC, um, those are the, the guys who are like in the military classes and stuff like that. They had a presentation there of their uh, drill team. And they would like spin their weapons around really cool. And they were like throwing them back and forth on the stage. It was really awesome. And I remember we sat through this presentation and we saw it. And me and Gabriel both looked at each other, smiled, and nodded because we knew that that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to join the ROTC. We wanted to throw the fucking guns around. We wanted to be fucking cool. That was the second biggest moment in my life. Because of that, and I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here several years and then kind of go backwards. I was in the JROTC program. I grew up in a military household, kind of military household. It wasn't like we were like military brass. Like I didn't move from place to place or nothing like that. Um, but uh, we grew up like with a strong military ethic in my family. And this only made me want to go into the military. I would not have joined the military otherwise. I really would not have. So my entire military experience is due to the fact that I got kicked out of middle school. How do you like them apples? Tell me one event can't change your fucking life. Um, so with that being said, we saw that, uh, presentation and we were hooked and we wanted to be, uh, part of the, the drill team and, and fucking go spin our weapons and, and, and be fucking super cool and shit like that. So that's what we did. Um, it ended up, what time is it? Okay. It's, I got a little bit of time left. Um, well, when I went to middle school or when I went to high school, I ended up meeting uh, a good friend of mine that I actually knew from middle school, believe it or not. He didn't get accepted to his high school of choice. He ended up having to go uh, to a regular to uh, a regular school, and uh, that's how he ended up where he was. And it was really cool because we actually got to, like, I guess come back together and be friends again. Um and I think I'm going to leave off my story there. I'm kind of rambly at this point. Uh, I need to get my thoughts together uh, on how all this affected uh, me meeting baby girl. Um, like, I, I, like I said, it's, it's really hard for me to kind of do this because like the events don't fall into any kind of specific order um, in my head. So I'm, I'm really struggling to try to figure out what events happened first and what didn't. Um, but hey, look at this. Look at this. We, we did what we set out to do. Uh, we went ahead and we fit. Why is this? Is there a reason why this is a stone brick? Oh, fuck. Yeah, there is. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter because uh, you're not going to see this from the floor anyway. Uh, and even if you did, doesn't matter. Uh, we can we can go ahead and do something like this. Oh, fuck. I'm out of I'm out of the half slabs. Uh, would I would I want to do that? Yeah, yeah, I want to do that. OK, so um, so there we go. There we have it. Uh, we've almost finished the roof. We got a few more little bits and ends and pieces to do. I'll probably end up doing that like right now. Uh, thank you also once again for just listening to my fucking rants and my stories. Um, I don't know if this is even entertaining for you guys or not, but like I said, this is sort of like a big Q and A also session for uh, for me. You guys can kind of figure out um, who I am and and my history and my backstory and can kind of like I guess if there's anybody out there who's kind of struggling with with high school and stuff like that like just kind of notice that some adults can be assholes about it but for the most part like we tend to remember all the trials and tribulations and, and the bullshit that happens along the way and I, i'm an open ear if you just need somebody to bitch to and be like dude this fucking sucks like uh i, I will listen to you i won't be happy about it but, <laughs> but i'll listen to you so uh thanks for listening to me and um I guess we'll catch you guys all on the next episode. So, uh, like I said, thank you for joining me, and uh, I will catch you all next time.